friends, in today's video I want to talk you through how I made this lovely little box out of a simple empty chocolate trifle container. I uh, inherited three of these from my in-laws so I have already decorated two of them. When I made this one I asked you guys on social media if you wanted to see a tutorial on how I did it and so I recorded how I decorated this little box. Um, it is slightly different, in the same style, but a little bit different. Not too much though. So I just wanted to quickly jump in and tell you the differences between these two. Just because when I have to do the same project um, again, I, if I can, I'd rather make it in the same style but slightly different. I don't like to repeat myself. So on this one, as you can see, I... Um, it has slightly different moulds. Here on the front we have this lovely little keyhole and some florals. And of course this one has a ribbon on it. And also little dots that I added. The dots, I, um, I added these dots just using my usual contour liner. You could use liquid pearls for that instead. And also under this ribbon I um, stenciled a little border but you can't really see it all that much and then with this one of course there is a different mold on the front and instead of the ribbon I decided to add mold around the edge of the lid because I just wanted to try something different so I just wanted to also say that uh, before you get started the easier the lid is to take off before you get started the easier it will be to work with because um, so this first one that I made, I made out of the exact same box as this one. So as you can see, the lid comes off quite easily, straight away. And on this one, even though I've painted it, I've varnished it, the lid still comes off quite easily. Whereas on this one, the lid was a little bit tighter, and so there's a little bit more friction on it. So you have to be careful when you apply your layers of paint and varnish, make sure that you apply thin layers on the parts that are gonna to be touching to make sure that you are still able to open and close your box. And this is what they look like on the inside. So I have these little hearts in here um, and put a little bit of wrapping inside and some tissue paper. And so this is how I decided to use them. So of course, it is completely up to you how you decide to do the, the inside. You could also decoupage the inside, add, um, add some paper on the inside if you wanted to make it really pretty. I think that these are perfect for any kind of handmade gift that you might want to um, give to somebody who likes their vintage um, or shabby chic. Uh, so you could put some soaps inside of it, some little decorations. Also for Christmas time, if, you, if you're eating chocolate trifles during the year, save these boxes. And then around the Christmas time, a lot of us make little baubles and stuff. So you could always make one bauble and put it inside, just put a little bit of raffia inside or some tissue paper or something like that and lay it on the inside and you could just gift it to somebody. And then it's not just one lonely bauble, it's gonna be a nice little bauble in a pretty box but yeah that's all i wanted to say so um i hope that you will enjoy this video one little quickie if you do enjoy it make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to see more and transition so the first thing that i did is prepare my box so it had a few stickers on it so i took them off and it also had this little ribbon thingy that i tried to cut off as far as i could get for priming i used my rust-oleum chalky finish furniture paint in chalk white and then i applied a generous amount over the lid of the box and then i applied a fairly thin layer over the actual body of the box because the lid has to then slide onto the body of the box and we're going to be applying two three different paints plus varnish over the top of it you want to go in thin layers so that you are still then able to put your lid back on and also open and close it without any issues and i only did the outside of the box the inside we're going to do later and then i went to apply my clay mold the clay that i'm using is das air drying clay in color white you can also get it in terracotta it doesn't really matter which one you have um, any other air drying clay is also going to be fine the molds that i used are by redesign with prima and i literally just used this one um, i believe it's called madame garland 
garland from them, something like that. I really do like Prima's molds, they are really really good. If you would like to find out some more about them, I'll leave a link in the description to like their stock list website because they don't sell them online off of their own shop, they have um, little shops in places. As far as I understand they just have stock listers that sell them. Some of them sell them online, some of them don't, so you might want to check on their website to see if they have one wherever you are. And so I decided to make this little clay um, medallion thingy and then apply that ribbony thing around the edge. I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> um, and so this is this PVA glue that I'm using is trade PVA, so I bought it in B&Q. Um, this is dial um, dial PVA, I believe. So you you want to be using something that's quite strong and, and sort of trade grade rather than craft PVA, so that it definitely sticks on, especially on the sides of the lid. You could also use things like hard as nails or any kind of this this kind of gooey glue. Worst case scenario, if you don't have access to any kind of trade glues, then you can always use hot glue you want to be careful with it and it might not be as good but if you don't have anything else to work with and then i made the molds for the side and i left it to dry for about 24 hours you might not have to leave it for as long depending on um, depending on the humidity levels and the size of your mold you'll know when it's dry when the clay turns white so um, it is white air drying clay but when it's still damp it kind of has this greyish tint to it. When it turns completely white and to, and it's hard to touch, that's when you know that it's ready. After my clay was dry, I took this grey paint, which is a mix of my Rust-Oleum white paint, uh, so chalk paint, and uh, some black paint, I think. Black, maybe something else, I can't remember. It'll definitely be a mix of chalk paint and acrylic paint. I get that question a lot, what kind of paint I use and how I mix them. I will usually use uh, chalk paint as my base and then I add acrylic paint to shade my paint. So that's um, acrylic paint and chalk paints, they kind of, they mix well together. So acrylic paints tend to be a lot cheaper. Um, so that's what I tend to use for, for colouring. And so I did two layers of the paint on the outside of the lid and then I did one layer of paint everywhere else. Um, I only applied one layer of paint on the inside of the lid and the outside of the body of the box because I was trying to keep the paint as thin as possible to make sure that I'm still able to use my lid and I knew that I was going to apply a lot of white over it anyways. So there wasn't that much point for me to try and cover everything up because I was going to distress it anyways. And so to distress it, once again, I took my chalky paint, I took my chalk paint and a natural bristle brush and I pick a little bit up with my brush. I wipe most of the excess off onto my plate and then I just kind of gently brush it over all of my molds and the whole lid and everywhere and I go in every which direction because we're going for a shabby look. That's the easiest way to get it. And so that's what I did both on the inside and the outside of the box.
And so lastly to seal it I used my heavy duty wood varnish by Polyvan. I used the heavy duty one uh, because it's completely non-stick and so with this kind of lid that sits on top um, and it is quite tight there, it is important that your varnish is non-stick. So you, if you don't have varnish that is completely non-stick, what I would advise would be to use maybe a clear wax if you have any, because wax is quite slidey so it shouldn't stick together, you should still be able to take your um, lid off and on as, as and how you please. And if you don't have either of them, what I would probably suggest is to just leave it, um, leave it without sealing it, uh, maybe just seal the top of the lid or something and don't seal the bits where the lid and the body of the box touch um, because you don't, what you don't want to happen is you don't want them to stick together because when you then, if they're stuck together, you'll either ruin the box or you won't be able to get into it. And for something like this, if you're planning to use it as a gift box or as a box to just simply hold something in there, you, it probably won't get that much use and it looks shabby anyways. Even if um, over time some paint brushes away or anything like that, then it's not that big of a tragedy. But yeah, that is the end of the video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found this video helpful and that you learned something new. Let me know if you would like to see more of these kind of videos. Let me know what you would use this kind of box for that is the question for today and as always if you like this video give it a like if you want to see more videos from me make sure to subscribe if you want to connect with me on other social media click the links in the description and i will see you guys in the next video bye bye